What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today's video, we are talking Ned Rigs, things that you need to take into consideration next time you're throwing a Ned Rig out on the lake. As you can see, there are so many different Ned Rig baits on the market. And uh, you know, one thing that is always brought up Obviously, you guys have seen, those that follow me know that I have a Ned Rig box. Go ahead and make fun of me down in the comments section. But it is a very in-depth uh, technique. And that's what I kind of want to graze the surface with you guys today. You know, there's so many different baits on the market. And the first question that most people ask when you're talking about a different Ned Rig bait, does it float? Does it float? How does it look underwater? And not all of the best Ned Rig baits float. I mean, this right here, that's the, that's the Robo Worm. You can see it stands up. You can see this, the TRD uh, Cross floats, the X-Zone floats, the Missile Baits floats. It, they all have different actions. Here's the original TRD. A lot like the Robo Worm. So it's gonna stand up vertically. You know, these, when you put a head on it, it's gonna stand up, it's gonna have some different action. But uh, more importantly, <clears throat> again, guys, I'm, I'm just coming off of being sick, so, so bear with me. I would love to do this outside, but uh, hopefully another few days, I'll be out on the water fishing. But uh, hopefully you guys all got a chance to watch the New Year's video, the New Year's goals. I missed out on it, but I gave Matt my goals, sorry. Um, and, and it's very important that all of you guys set you know, life goals, fishing goals, relationship goals, all that stuff every year. So make sure you guys uh, go watch that video. And down below in the comments section, let us know your goals. I think last time I checked, I had read like 700 and over 750 comments. So very cool for you guys commenting down below in that video. But <clears throat> getting back to this video, again, just feeling a little under the weather. And uh, the way things are these days, I didn't want to, um, needed to social distance, right? So. Uh, hopefully feel better here in a few days and get out on the water but getting back to the ned rigs as you can see so many different baits on the water are on the market you know robo worm x zone z-man trd um, missile baits the ned bomb these are all baits that i throw and they all work diff differently but today as i was sitting here organizing tackle i looked at my ned rig box and Realize that I don't know that I've ever heard anybody really talk about this As you can see I Have two different styles of hooks. I have my tungsten over here, and I have my lead over here. I have tungsten in uh, 10 8 3 16 and quarter weights, and I have lead in 32nd 16 8 and quarter now, why do I have so many different net heads? And the answer, I wish it was simple. I guess it could be. It could be as simple as I want to explain it. But, um, you know, why would one day would I be throwing a 30 seconds ounce head and another day throwing an eighth ounce head or going all the way up to a quarter ounce head? <laughs> it all depends on the situation that I am fishing. Am I fishing current? Am I fishing deeper water? Which bait am I fishing? Am I fishing a bait that has a lot of buoyancy or one that sinks but stands straight up? So all of those play into uh, my selection of the type of head that I'm throwing. Now, the one thing that stands out in all of this, you only want to throw the lightest weight possible that you can still feel and contact bottom. So one day, maybe you're fishing a deep highland reservoir and you're fishing 60 foot, you're gonna need to throw something heavier, a quarter ounce. Maybe one day you're fishing clear, slick conditions, but you're fishing 12 to 15 feet, but you don't want this thing crashing down to the bottom, you can go with something smaller. So today's video, my one tip, <clears throat> couple tips for you but my first tip is going to be and this is this applies to drop shot fishing this applies to a lot of finesse fishing fish 
the lightest possible weight that you can get away with. The reason being, you only want to have that bottom contact. You don't want that thing dredging down, getting hung up, getting snagged. You want that thing just, just heavy enough to be down there, just ticking bottom, you know, letting that bait have natural motion. That's really what's key. When you anchor one of these Ned rigs down with a big weight, that thing's gonna fall quick, it's gonna stand up, and you're gonna drag and you're gonna dredge, which might be what you need to do in, uh, on, on one occasion, but it's not gonna be the exact thing you need to do on every occasion. So get in the habit of fishing the lightest head possible that lets you effectively fish the depth that you're targeting don't go too heavy. You want to be able to feel that bait so you know that you have contact with bottom and contact with your bait, but you want it just light enough or just heavy enough to effectively be down there, but not disrupt the natural action of the bait. Now you can see right here, this, this, this is X zone. That's the missile baits and the TRD craw that worm. Any of those worms is going to look different put on the same head as these guys. So hopefully that makes sense. And I know one of the biggest things, like I said before, when people are talking about Ned rig baits, is do they float? And most of them do, most have some kind of floating, um, I don't know, description to them. You know, like this X zone, you can see this whole thing floats. You can see the Robo and the Ned kind of <clears throat> stand up vertically, but putting those side by side on the same head, they're gonna look differently underwater. So you can actually get away with a little, little heavier head on a Ned bait that floats versus something like this that sinks. So another key thing that really plays into that is gonna be your line diameter. Are you fishing crystal clear water on four pound test? Go with something smaller. If you're fishing murkier water, dingier water, you know, seven, eight, 10, 12 pound test, that's a lot more line drag in the water, you're gonna need to go with something heavier. So all this to say, this is the reason why I have so many different weights of Ned Rig heads. You know, just like a drop shot, drop shot fisherman, you're not gonna go out and throw a half ounce weight everywhere you go. You're not gonna go out and just crash bottom with a three quarter ounce weight. No, some circumstances you're gonna use an eighth ounce. Some circumstances you're gonna use a 3 16 or a quarter, depending on current, uh, the depth that you're trying to target. So all those things come into play. It's not just about do they float. So just a, a real quick video, guys. I wanted to, to kind of <clears throat> show you guys why this is really important because to really be a successful finesse fisherman, you gotta look into these details, right? You gotta pay attention to what line you're fishing. You know, if you're fishing eight pound test versus four pound test, that's can completely gonna change the action of your worm or your Ned Rig. Drop shot fisherman, Ned Rig fisherman, that sort of stuff matters, it really does. So <clears throat> next time you're at home and you're organizing tackle, grab your Ned Rigs, grab your, your favorite drop shot worms and, and play around with what they look like underwater. Rig them up, get a little uh, aquarium, you know, a little five gallon aquarium and uh, play around with baits because you'll be surprised, one, what they look like underwater, two, what they look like with minimal movement, and three, what they look like with the movement that you, you give shaking that rod tip. So again, guys, very, very important, often overlooked is the different types of heads for Ned Rigs. Now real quickly, let me talk about the different baits that I have uh, displayed here and when I might use each of them. So I kind of have them separated in two categories. I have the, uh, I guess the, the bottom contact but vertical standing baits, and then I have the true floating baits, the baits that are gonna float to the surface unless you add weight. Now typically this time of the year, <clears throat> I want very minimal movement. So that's what I'm gonna lean towards your typical TRD or your net, your robo worm. Another great one that stood out to me, these are available to pre-order right now. This is a new one by Savage Gear. I have this one paired up with a little 30 seconds ounce uh, owner blockhead jig. This is like a little salamander, but it's got a lot of the, the little rivets, um, you know, like the missile baits has or some other baits on the market. But uh, 
they kind of come out with their own Elaztec technology, uh, but really liking that guy right there. But I will link all of my favorite baits down below in the video description. But getting back to winter fishing, <clears throat> sure, you'll be able to catch fish on baits like this, but you're gonna have a lot more movement than you realize. So be careful, you know, pair these up with a heavier head, be careful with your rod tip action. Uh, but again, this time of the year, I'm going with something with more dead action. The Robo Worm, the, the traditional, the TRD, a uh, <clears throat> lot, lot less action, a lot less movement, you know, water conditions, weather conditions, these time, this time of the year, winter time, you don't want a lot of movement down there. You know, flip side, springtime, summertime, you're gonna wanna go with something like this. Something, you know, this is like a little smallie beaver cut in half, put on a, a little net head. You have something that has kind of a, a bait fish profile, lots of action. And this is a little, <clears throat> little trick. If you cut your smallie beavers in half, you know, we've drop shot them for years, but they work great on a net rig as well. You got two different tails back there, kind of doing different things. Looks like a dorsal fin and a tail, but, uh, Lots of different things you can do depending on your water temperature, how active your fish are. But again, this video just kind of came off the top of my head when organizing stuff and I'm like, man, I have a ton of Ned Rig hooks and I've never really talked about why I have so many. You know, if you're fishing a current situation, you wanna go a little heavier than, than you would if you were fishing slack water, you know, and vice versa. So again, the goal in finesse fishing is fishing the lightest weight possible, lightest weight possible that you can still effect, still effectively feel your bait when it gets picked up, when it gets pushed. You know, maybe a, a bass comes and charges it, and that wall of water that it pushes pushes your bait, and your bait kind of just dis disappears just a little bit. You want to uh, be able to feel heavy enough that you can feel your bait. What's going on down there? Don't go super heavy unless you're going for a true reaction bite, and you want that thing crashing down on their head. But again, guys. Pay attention to the type of worms you're throwing. Pay attention to the actions they have and the sizes of heads you're doing. And I think you guys will effectively catch more fish this winter time season. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments section. Just like every video, I will link my favorite heads, favorite sized heads for each of these types of worms. And uh, you know, you'll adjust accordingly uh, according to the weather conditions and the water conditions that you're fishing. As always, guys, if you learned something from this video, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Do three videos a week for you. Hoping to get out there fishing here in the next uh, few videos. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one.